and welcome back to another episode of Kinky Politics. We are your hosts. I am Kai. This is Rob Harrell. Kirk is what taking, up? Yes, Kirk is taking a temporary leave of absence, but we are ready to bring you the heat. Today's topic is gambling. Gambling, gambling, gambling. I think really Rob would know more about this than I would, but I do have an opinion. <laughs> Not an educated okay. one, but an opinion. I, I, I hope you do. <laughs> so please, Rob, talk to us about gambling in Australia versus gambling in America. Okay, well, first of all, gambling is the, an accepted cool thing here. It, it's almost like gambling is so cool that they don't even call you gamblers. They call you punters because that scene sounds different. I mean, hey, I'm a punter, you know, you can't get through anything, any sport or whatever TV show without seeing what are the odds, the betting, the, the commercials are so cool and fun, right? That it, it's just accepted. You know, you walk into any restaurant and there is the poker machine or something to do with gambling. And it, it's such a problem here as far as young people because they're always betting, you know? And it's it's almost, it, it's funny because they don't even say, it's almost like they brainwash themselves to take the word gambling out of it. It's like, hey, let's have a punt. Well, you know, and it's like, well, okay, that's different. So it's not gambling, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, America has Vegas. America has scratch tickets. America has all of those things where people lose their money and bet on. But it's not like here. I remember coming here and the the, the, tell, the telltale sign was when my son came back from kindergarten on us on the Melbourne Cup day with this fake ticket that he bet on a horse. In kindergarten, the teachers <laughs> had them picking horses. And I was like, what? <laughs> kindergarten? What do you know about horse racing? He had a little cutout picture of a horse, yeah. the one he bet on for the Melbourne Cup. And I, you know, I was about to go up there. It was about to be on. But, I, you know, I was just like, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> he doesn't need to be thinking about gambling in kindergarten. But right. welcome to Australia, mate. That's what it is. Okay. You know, it's so true. It's like um, when I was working my first corporate job during the Melbourne Cup, and I had ne I had never I'd never experienced it, especially in work culture. Um, you know, I, I I my boss was like, oh, I told him I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be here at, at my normal time, just gonna pick up a coffee, blah blah blah. And he was like, oh no no no, get here um, get here like an hour later. Uh, make sure you dress up. We're gonna all be watching inside of the the lounge area or something like that. And we're just taking it easy today. I'm sorry, what? And and he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, if you want to bring any snacks or anything like that, I'm like, oh no, I I'm working to get paid. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you'll still get paid. I'm like, I'll still get paid for not doing any work, just just hanging out. He's like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is what we do. And I'm like, and so I Googled this and I Googled like, you know, what do I dress? What do I wear for the Melbourne Cup? Cause you know, I'm thinking like, it's like going to the race car track or something like that. You know what I mean? Like whatever, just come in your, come in as what you, whatever you're wearing, right? These people are wearing these hats and you know, $600 dresses and all this glam and serious makeup and, work basically ended at like 2 p.m. and then everybody goes to the pubs like you were he goes to me um yeah we're all going to the pubs now and I was like oh I don't really drink like that like I'm like because I don't want like I, I gotta keep it professional you know what I mean I can't get right. sloppy you know with my work people but that's what they do they get sloppy together and I was like oh I can't do it and you know the next day they told me all about it and I'm like wow this is amazing the the culture of gambling is really looked upon very favorably you're right and and in america it's looked upon as like an addiction um like almost like alcoholism you know it's it's frowned upon and mm -hmm. that's why we have allocated places for you to gamble like vegas and you know these various places um but 
you know, they call they they call it cute little things like the pokey machines. You know, pokey machines sound so nice. It's like, oh, Pokemon or <laughs> okay. yes. huh? I said, of course it sounds cute. It, it, it's <laughs> you no, know, I mean it's it's one of these things. You even have to get like, you know, my first couple of years here in Australia, I before I was bartending, I was working security and they even have a special license called an rcg how to how to deal with gamblers and they you have to take a course on how to deal with people who are gambling how to talk them out of gambling how to congratulate them on their wins and then say i think that's enough mate you know it, it's just like it, there are courses to teach you how to deal with these gamblers and just it, it's 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 uh, it's full blown here yeah you know you're right i remember um, our a recent trip to Brisbane um, last year, and the, for the first, I've never been to Brisbane. Have you ever been to Brisbane? I have. I love Brisbane. Love that, now that's yeah. my city. That is my city. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, but I remember for the first time, like going, like you know, to a to like a casino type of thing there, and and you know, Kirk was like, yeah, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars because I didn't want to spend any money. I don't gamble. So I'm like, I don't want to spend any money. I don't find this enjoyable, you know, um, losing money for the sake of losing money. Like, huh? Um, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars. Let's, let's do it. And I'm like, okay. So we, we do it. And the, I'm asking the guy how to play and he's telling me and he goes, but now you've got a hundred dollars. Keep it. And I'm thinking to myself, bitch, don't you want me to spend this money so that I can, you know, <laughs> lose and then try and get some more money? And he's, and I was like, no, what are you talking about? I'm here at this table. I'm trying to gamble some money. He's like, oh, honey, before you get before you get in too deep, keep your money. And he starts servicing other people. And I'm thinking to myself, well, God damn it, I'm going to gamble. I am going to gamble, you know? And it's like college. Uh, Yes, <laughs> this is, it, it was psychology. And he kept saying it to me, like every time I would do well, he'd be like, now you're up by 50, keep the money, keep the and money. Go. go. Yeah, so eventually I stopped, but it was great because for me, someone who's not familiar with gambling, it was kind of nice having someone be like, well, like, I think you've reached your limit, like, like check right. yourself now, you know? So it was kind right. of interesting right. how they have these things in place, but, I'm also thinking, you know, if I was someone who was really interested in gambling, mm. I have a feeling it would only make me more. Yeah. You know, like I'd be like, uh, I might want to just see. Yeah. Let's, let's do a couple more. Let's do a couple more bets, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, I feel the same way about cocaine versus weed here. Um, really? Okay. Yeah, That's true. I I think that cocaine is more of a socially accepted drug, especially amongst corporate professionals, mm. um, than, for example, marijuana. Marijuana here is obviously still illegal, but they're starting to implement things to make it, you know, they're doing right. medicinal stuff. Um, yeah. And now in America, weed is starting to become a very mainstream thing uh, when Absolutely. it wasn't right when it wasn't for so long. Obviously, it was it was hyped in America in uh, California, but now statewide, ne sorry, um, nationwide, marijuana is now looked at as okay. Um, and I feel like our weed equivalent is the same as our. As, as Australia's cocaine equivalent in that mm -hmm. if you if you do cocaine it's like oh you're you want to get the job done you're super effective you are straight laced almost and um I, I don't know do you have any sort of insight well, on that yeah. well well see you also have to look at it from if, if you just if you look at them both face value yeah all right with cocaine, cocaine is an accelerant, mm. whereas weed is a depressant. Yeah. Right? Cocaine is odorless, mm -hmm. unless you're smoking it, of course. It's yeah. odorless. Yeah. It's it's easy to carry. 
Yeah. Easy to seal. Yeah. Um, and easier to use in a in an open environment. Mm. Whereas you pull out a joint, everybody's gonna smell the smoke around you and you're busted. Right. You know, you can quickly hide a gram of cocaine in your sock where you can't really hide an ounce of, of marijuana <laughs> in your pocket without looking like you're, you're carrying a concealed weapon. You know, it's just sort of like, it, it it's, it's just easier. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's an easier drug to get away with in a social setting. Yeah, you're because, right. because the it's... effects are the effects are positive when you're talking about it, it's gonna it's gonna make a sort of um, productivity. A, a, pro, a productivity is, is gonna increase. Mm -hmm. you, you may not get the answers right, or you may not be doing the correct job, but you're gonna do it faster. Yeah. And you know, and, 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 and so it, it's just a it's just um I guess if you're a salesman there's more upside to pushing cocaine than there is to pushing weed mm. you know what i mean mm. and it's one of those things here it, it's it's the preferred party party on drug mm. yeah and you're right it is it's quite discreet it's very discreet oh, yeah. so it, it looks professional in that sense too like it doesn't smell you know you can be covert about it um mm -hmm. You know, you can do it a variety of ways. You can sniff it. You can put it on your tongue like they do and all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know. It's um, it's a lot. I mean, I I, I can't do cocaine. I I, <laughs> I can barely do coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just stay away. You know stay what I'm away. saying? <laughs> so yeah. it ain't for You're me. Cartwheel. Exactly. Yeah. Like I am, I'm, I'm, we're going to the moon if I'm doing that, you know? Right, 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 um, yeah. so, th so that's not for me, but I just find it very interesting how we're both two Western countries, English speaking, and we might as well be talking completely different languages, like gambling. Mm -hmm. No gambling here. Yes. Cocaine. No. Cocaine here? Yes. Weed? Yes. Cocaine? I mean, weed? No. I just think right. it's so bizarre. I mean, and I could go on about the differences here. Oh my mm -hmm. God. I could go on about the differences here. But those two things are really amazing to me because obviously drugs are, they, they benefit an economy. And mm -hmm. it's interesting to see how they're used in different countries and how different countries appreciate them. Um, mm -hmm. and gambling benefits the economy as well. And it's interesting how they're used in predominantly speak, it, it's predominantly English speaking countries. So American Australia, powerful first world countries and yeah. to see how, yeah, just to see how they're used. I think it's kind of, I just think it's kind of, um, kind of weird. Um, any yeah. final thoughts or closing thoughts about it? Uh, uh, it? It's just funny. I thought, I think the only funny thing I thought of just recently when you just said how two, we're two countries, but it seems like one of us is not speaking English. And it just reminded me of a really funny story. Um, when I used to work in hospitality and there would be all these either Brazilians or Asians that would, would come in and the Aussie you know, the Aussie manager would give instructions and they all would turn and look to me and go, what did he say? <laughs> and they would say, we love when you speak because you speak actually very clearly. You pronounce the words. Everything's not abbreviated. We can understand what you're talking about. Whereas this guy, we have no idea. We get one out of every seven words. And I would just laugh because I was like, and, and I came to the conclusion as, Australians speak Australian. There's no, they're not speaking English. There's a whole different thing. If you're not Australian, you don't know what they're talking about. And I do that to my friends in, in America all the time. I'll just throw some Aussie phrase at, you know, phrase at them and they'll go, what? Yeah. What did you say? Right. That's not even English, bro. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Not to get off topic, but yeah. Um, God, I was so confused. I was so confused for the first two years while I was here. I mean, like, it was really doing my head, like doing my head in. Um, the phrases are insane here. And the words, oh. like <laughs> the doctor, I, I went in 
for like some bump, like I thought it was a rash on my, you know, and I'm like, oh, oh like yeah. I'm freaking out. What is this? And she's like, oh, those just like mozzie bites. Excuse right. me? What is a mozzie? What? Yeah. What? I'm like, <laughs> I've never heard of a mozzie. And she's like, a mozzie? You've never heard of a mosquito? I'm like, oh, a mosquito bite. <laughs> or like Arvo. Ar I didn't know that Arvo meant afternoon. Arvo? Um, when I first heard that, I'm like, oh, no, avocado. Avocado? I don't want avocado. You know, uh, oh, no. I just couldn't get, you know, and they don't say, they don't have hard R's here. So I heard avo, 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 this avo. Yep. Uh, this avocado, I, I'm sorry, you got me all the way confused. So, yeah, yeah <laughs> it I know. is amazing. Um, how you gotta love them more because they are fun. They are fun, fun. It, it, this is a fun country. People here, it, as it was best described to me, is mate. If you can, if you can shorten it, shorten it. Don't waste your time saying the whole thing. It takes too long. And it's <laughs> exhausting. So just, just shorten it, mate. Just shorten it, mate. Just come on. I love it. Get I on with it. it. I love and it. And they love to swear. And swearing is 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 actually part of the conversation here. It's okay. It's unbelievable too. I can't, I, I can't believe that. I cannot believe that. But this my first corporate, uh, well, I, I used to, I used to be a postie, you know, big mm -hmm. corporate op in a post office. Mm -hmm. And I remember my first major staff meeting, right? 300 employees all there, right? The guy's going on and on and on and on and on, right? And then at the end of the meeting, he says, okay, okay everybody fuck off and go back to work. And I was just like, did he just swear at us? He just swore at us. The dude in the suit just swore at us. And they're looking at me like, come on, man, you just said fuck off. That means go back to work. And I was like, you're at work and they're like bloody american and i was just walked off oh went back to work doing all the like i just got swore at but you know <laughs> what it is it's what it is right um, this right that's the one anyway this has been great thank you so much rob you are a wonderful wonderful host i appreciate the discourse fun chatting with you you too Guys, if you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you on the flip side. not my new black.